Okay, I think I'll just let that amount just sit in there for the first. I think mummy's sneezing for me. Is she? Okay, who you think? Mummy needs you. Bye. <laughs> Is there any chance I could just film my video, guys? Are you coming? <laughs> That's where everyone is. Welcome back to the channel everyone. As you can see behind me, I've got a massive exoterra, terrarium, paludarium, that sort of thing, whatever you want to call it, to skate. It's been sat here for a while, I've not done anything with it, but now is the time for us to kit it out. First of all though, I want to take out the background. Now the one you get with it is perfectly good, but I want to go for something a bit more natural, but I'm going to use it as the template for the build. First of all, i just got to work out how to get it out. So the background does look really good. It's just that I wanna have something that I can use to make water travel through. I'm gonna be using some of this cocoa fiber brick broken up, and then I'm gonna put silicon on the areas where I want it to stick, chuck it on and let it stick. I mean, it's probably easier if I just show you, isn't it? Yeah, let's do that. it's the next day everything is completely secured and solid but <laughs> look at this funny bit right here <laughs> that's where the air was seeping out as the rest was dried and it's just sort of made this little nugget oh no sorry i can't see a thing so what we want to do now is take a stanley blade to it and just rough it right up and blend in the shapes in the sides so then we can add our silicon and our sort of detailed barky stuff <laughs> Well, I think that's turned out really good. I can see some gaps, a few bits of gaps like that. It doesn't really matter because we're going to cover it up anyway. What we've got to do now is smear all the silicon all over the green bits you can see. And I'm probably going to do some on the white bits as well. And then we... Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, do you mind? I'm trying to do a video here. <laughs> what is it? It's the camera. You're going to see a lot of this. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to cover up the green bits with silicon and then I'm going to chuck on all that sort of foresty, muddy stuff on it. <laughs> To be honest, I think I'm just going to use this stuff. I don't think I need the cocoa fibre. This 
biolife foresty stuff. Look, it's got all the fine stuff in it. That's going to go on the silicon really well. Hey guys look at how good that's looking i can't wait to get it in but first i need to sort of get some help to angle this down and get it back in again because that space is not big enough right i skipped the process but it's it hang on let me get those doors open one two i skipped the process but it's in look at how good that looks i think a good idea now though would be to put the lighting unit on oh i need to put that back on yeah <laughs> i need to put the lighting back on top so it can actually illuminate and see what's going on obviously it's going to be all water down this bottom section so that's why i've left that clear uh, the rocks are all going to come around and then gravel and other rocks are going to come up above sticks going everywhere and all the greenery yeah let's get on with that So the lighting we've got is this compact top terrarium canopy. Yeah, I don't know a lot about it guys. All I know is that it's used with the Exoterra compact fluorescent or the incandescent blah, 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 blah. It holds bulbs, it puts the light downwards. That's all you need to know. And it needs to go on top. Then, moment of truth. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really pleased with how that's turned out, guys. A couple of little patches that are showing through, but it won't matter because a big fern will be in that area. I'm going to put ferns mainly at the top and then like some smaller stuff on the bottom, the rocks will go in, and then all the wood. I don't need to talk about it, just get on with it. Right, so I've bought these plants from the garden center. We basically, this is a type of asparagus apparently, but you know, news to me. And uh, we just got some Boston ferns as well. I've got some ivy and things like that. Now what I want to do is I want to put them inside of here. Oh, best if I open it, isn't it? Yeah, I want to put them inside now so that obviously if I'm going to be building the bottom area, I don't want to do all of that, put water in, and then just get all soil dripping down into the water, polluting it all. So if we get the ferns in now and get them all settled in when we want them, we're away. So that's some of the ferns and more delicate plants in the paludarium already, but I'm saving the other slots that I've got in there for some more bulkier plants. Now the animals that I want to get for this paludarium, like a broadleaf, and also they're renowned for like being bulls in a china shop. They're not bulls, <laughs> they wouldn't fit. That's not even funny. But either way, adding the variety of sort of leaf sizes will actually really add to the aesthetics of the paludarium. But I'm really liking what we've got so far. Ooh. 
so the ferns have actually now been in the enclosure for a few days they're actually starting to stand up and grow towards the light which is great but i was waiting for some new parcels to arrive that have got even more plants in because we don't just want ferns in here for the species of animal that i've got going in we need broad leaves they like to sit on leaves or stick on leaves maybe that's a clue as to what is potentially coming these are the plants we've got now let's get them open Right, this is really hard to do one-handed, but it's worth it to show you guys. And here they are then, here's my plant. So I've got this big broadleaf one. It's a bit pushed down, but nothing snapped, but I guess that's just to get it in the box. I then got this one as well. I'll put the names of the, you can't see that, it's not focused, there we go. Um, come on, focus please. Focus, there we go. Oh, I'm gonna get them out and show you properly, but yeah, we've got some, we've got some nice plants here. So you can see that I've just placed down some more sort of foam that I found just to protect the base a bit more from these heavy rocks going on because I want to pile them all in there just up quite nice and high. And then we can just put some gravel on top and then that'll be out of the water by that point. Put down a membrane and we can lay our soil on top of that. So I've now got some stone chippings that I've stolen from my driveway and I'm going to use that to fill out the back section because it just fills in all the gaps, all the all the crevices. It means that there'll be no sort of holes in between these rocks as well for anything to get stuck in. And it just it's just a cheap way of building up that back area. I could place more rocks in, but it would just leave gaps. This is a much better way of doing it. Right, so that's all the rocks in place and all the gravel in behind. What I've done is actually silicon this one down because you can see it's quite an angle it sat on there. I didn't feel safe just letting it balance. So that's silicon down, which has locked that one into place, that one into place. So what I want to do now is actually put like a sort of semi-permeable membrane over all of that gravel that will allow some water to trickle through uh, from the soil above it, but not the soil itself to get in. And I also want to put some filter floss in there as well. So we'll lay those two bits down and then we can put our soil on top. That's what we can put more plants into, but not too many more because... <laughs> We're already in full sort of green mode, but yeah, it'll also allow me to put my sticks and that across that I've got planned as well. So for some reason, and I do not know why, I've just hit maximum excitement level on this build. I think it's because adding in that dirt substrate is something that I've never done before. And it's kind of just made it sort of all become real. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I know what I mean. And yeah, really excited now. <laughs> But it's now time to add in some wood just so we can like this is wood <laughs> just so we can tie in the ground like the well the not the ground but the the dirted area with the higher tree areas so i just think pieces of wood like this that can overlap the the rocky foreground and then reach into the top just gonna add really i just said that title together you know what i mean <laughs> like that I think I've nailed it there so what I've sort of done is is kept this one off of this side so we've got a nice big planting area we've got a nice big shaded planting area in the middle section there areas to perch on and for possible moss to grow up and different plants to wrap around just step back for you guys so yeah look at that obviously the base is gonna look far more natural oh the phone's ringing Yep. 
Right, there we go. I personally think that looks awesome. Some of you might prefer without having the Rio Zingo down. Rio Zingu? Rio Z <laughs> The darker stuff, the bigger bits. You might prefer not to have that down. You might have just, you know, the white sand. But for me, I really want to go for realism on this build. And that looks really realistic. It looks like a river's edge or a river bank or something like that. Now it's time to put some water in. You'll notice I deliberately left like a ledge area so that anything that does go in the water can possibly get out. Maybe a hint as to what could be going in this amazing scape. Now, call me stupid, and I'm sure you will, but I've not even water tested to see if this is tight, so hopefully we don't get any leaks. But there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's just get it in. Okay, I think I'll just let that amount just sit in there for the first... I think Mummy's sneezing for me. Is she? Okay, who you think? Mummy needs you. Bye. <laughs> Is there any chance I could just film my video, guys? Are you coming? <laughs> That's where everyone is. You're looking at you again, but just look at the hole. Look at the hole and say hello. Hello. No, you're looking at you. Look at <laughs> All the water is now filled up. It's holding nicely. It's gone a little bit murky, but that will clear very shortly because I have got this tiny little nano filter, but it's 300 litres an hour, so that's a good amount of water it's going to be pushing. I'm just going to put it in the little side area here, run the lead all the way out the back, because you're not really going to see it then, are you? It's not going to spoil how it looks. Ideally, you put the leads all behind the board that we've got at the back, but I don't want to do that with a filter that's here because I might need to take it in and out regularly for cleaning or something like that. So I don't want it stuck behind that whole background. And this way I can just neatly run the lead all the way up the sides, up near the back and pop it out the back at the top and plug it into the extension lead on the top. Perfect. Right, that's the filter all up and running. Still a little bit misty, it'll take a day or so to clear. But what I've done with the cable, look, you can see, I just neatly tucked it to the side and I've got a little suction cup with a clip there and then one over the other side at the top as well. So that's keeping that all sort of out of the way. You can barely see it. Yeah, the, the filter's slightly intrusive, but needs must. You've got to keep the fish clean, right? Well, the water clean anyway. Uh, next, what I've got. So you can see I left this area here completely clear and that's because I've got a couple more plants here. They're just in pots at the moment, look. So I want to get them planted in. I've got that one and a bromeliad. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. So that one doesn't actually need to be planted. I can place it as an epithyte plant on top of the wood wrap it in some sphagnum moss and just uh, let it grow sort of in the air if you like. It's kind of like an air plant. Well, I guess it is an air plant because it grows in the air. Anyway, so down here as well, I've got even more plants. Look at that. That is real, believe it or not. And a load of cool ones. So let's get them planted as well. That is all the terrestrial plants I want in, for, for now at least. I want to see how these do first. Like I say, I'm not accustomed to these kind of plants. I don't really know much about them. Only that they need soil and water. So, and nutrients obviously as well. Anyway, let's get some um, plants in the water section now. That'll do all the job of keeping that water clean as well as a little mini filter we've got in there as well. But the two combined should keep, keep the nitrates low and should just keep the water perfect for the fish that we've got planned to go in.
Right, so already that's looking really nice and natural, but I do want to add some little rocks just in this little gaps that you can see in the edges with some moss on. Now I've got plenty of moss to be able to choose from. So this is the old goldfish aquarium and you can see it's a moss extravaganza. Excuse that reflection. I really need to paint that black, don't I? I'm going to do that at some point. Maybe not now, maybe never. Anyway, we've got so much moss here. That is the thickest moss you've ever seen, isn't it? So I'm just going to cut off some of these bits, attach them to some rock with some super glue. Super glue is fine. Remember, use the gel type, the cyanoacrylate or whatever it's called. That's the one you want and attach it to the rocks. And then I can put it just in these little gaps like that one there and just under there. I mean, it doesn't matter there's gaps, but I just think it'll look quite nice with some, some moss rocks as well. But not too much. I'm not going to go overboard with it at all because it's already looking really good the way it transitions at the moment from that bottom section into the top. Oh yeah, and I don't think I've shown you guys this yet. Maybe I have. Anyway, ready? Three, two, one. We have light. <laughs> I've got like a cool app on my phone, a load of smart plugs and everything. So I can just turn it all on just like that. And then you've got everything lit up. Oh, so cool. So much easier. <laughs> So that is all the plants in, they look great. But what I wanna do now is just test the water because like I say, I've not had a soil method behind the water. Like I've got it, I've not done it before. I just wanna make sure the water's all right and then we can put in our enders, guppies, ender guppies, you know what I mean, the, the fish. So some good news, the tests have come back perfect. Let's add some fish. And you know what? One thing that is perfect, I don't have to go to a shop to get fish for my tank because <laughs> this is my guppy breeding tank, cool look, wild thing. I need better names. Um, but at the moment you can see there's quite a lot of males. If it will focus on that, I might have to switch to manual. It's backwards. But right, there we go, look. Okay, so there's quite a lot of males there, as you can see. And then we've got the females as well. So there's loads of babies as well. So if I reduce some of the male numbers by putting those across into the new aquarium, they'll look great. And you know, it'll sort this tank out as well for the ratios to make sure that the women, or the, the women, <laughs> the female fish aren't getting harassed by these males. <laughs> So we've got a good mix there of male endlers. They're looking great. Now the temperature of this tank is exactly the same as the water in this tank. The room itself sits at the perfect temperature for the endlers. So yeah, we don't need a heater, which is ideal because no messy wires or stuff sticking in the water. But it's time to put those fish in. You might be thinking, but hey MD, there's no way that that tank is cycled. Well, you'd be right. Technically what we're doing here is a fish in cycle. So if you're gonna do that, you need to, A, I would say have a lot of plants and there's a decent amount in there. Also, you need to be prepared to change the water pretty much every day for the first week. I'm gonna do 50% water changes every single day for the first week. And then in the second week, I'll drop that down to every other day, third week, every third day, and so on and so forth. Till eventually you can just do your normal 20% once a week, once every two weeks, you know, whatever your regime is. I find that I don't have to do that many water changes because I keep a lot of plants in all my tanks. Plants are amazing, they clean the water pretty much for you, basically. And then just to be sure though, I'm gonna dump in a load of this beneficial bacteria. It's now's the time to do it when the fish have just gone in so they can provide waste for this beneficial bacteria to feed on. Let's put it all in, there we go. 